Good morning and welcome to Wayne Goldsboro Television. It is Friday, May the 17th. Wow. I'm Kim Best. And I'm Wayne Alley. Good morning. WGTV Today, thank you for being with us. And we've got a great show lined up for you today. Tell yes, everybody who do. it is. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. We have Julie Metz here today. Oh, she is the director of Downtown De Goldsboro Development Corporation. And she's here to actually to talk about Streetscape. Oh, great. What happened in Phase 1 and yeah. what the plans are for Phase 2. Okay. We have Paige Lernard here. She is representing Crime Stoppers. We have Sherry Archibald here from the Paramount Theater. Okay. And we have a video from the Chamber of Commerce. All right. Yes, All we right. do. Let's see now. Today is the 17th, you said, right? Yes, I It did. is indeed a Friday. Today is Endangered Species Day. Oh, wow. Do you know any endangered species? I don't know. Are elephants endangered at this point in time? I know they no. have been in, at one point in time. No. I think they're uh, pretty safe now. I think they're fairly safe, you know, it's, it's, uh, for the time being. Do you know of any? Not right off the top of my head. All right. No. There we go. There you go. Now, that was a waste of time. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> okay. <laughs> today, today is also uh, uh, International Virtual Assistance Day. Do you know any virtual assistants? No, I can't say that. <laughs> I, I know those either. either. <laughs> today is NASCAR Day. It's also National Bike to Work Day. Is it really? Yeah, that is, that is what you it know, says. You know, I believe we talked not too long ago with... Um, Becky Craig about that. We did. And I know the hospital is having that day, and I'm not sure if it's today or not. Well, we'll just find out. But they are definitely wanting and encouraging their employees to drive, not drive, but right. ride their bikes to work. Right, ride your bicycle to work. Mm -hmm. And for some people, that would not be easy to do, but for some other people, it would be. That's right. It would be, yeah. All right, today is also National Defense Transportation Day. It is National Pizza Party Day. Ah. I'm in favor of that day. I am absolutely I love in it. favor yep. of that. <laughs> okay, it's also World Information Society Day, whatever that means. It's also World Telecommunications Day. Yes. Okay, and World Neurofibromatosis Day. Because we know exactly what that is. Oh, sure we do. Sure we do. Sure we do. Okay, <laughs> now with that said, yes. I think I just hurt myself when I read that. Did you? It, oh. That was a difficult word. Oh, yeah, it was, yes. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, we want to remind you tomorrow, the Goldsboro Sail and Power Squadron is having their annual boat safety inspection. That is tomorrow from 8 until 1. It's free of charge. Mm -hmm. Let's see where it will be. Casual drive between Berkeley and Spence. It's actually located at 212 New Hope Village Drive. Now, that used to be, mm -hmm. uh, there was a theater there some years ago. Okay. And it's right there at the corner uh uh, if you turn in and you keep going, you go to the mall. It's right there on the corner. Okay. Okay? Yes. Near Tractor Supply. Yes, where they have, the Optimus have the Christmas trees. That's it. Exactly. Right. That's where they're going to be. All right. Well, and it says they'll have an inspection to determine safe, safe boating that meets Coast Guard approval. Yes. Decals will be given to those who pass the inspection. Yes. Banners will be displayed at the inspection location but on casual between Berkeley and Ash, so you'll know more that that's what's going on and Dave Parsons of course is heading that up and will be there. If you have questions you can call him at 751-5553. What was that number? 751-5553. Okay. Dave Parsons about boating safety. Yeah. And and he's, he's got some great information too there. Uh, oh yes. About, about boating safety. And old Tommy Days is tomorrow. Old in Seven Springs? Days in Seven Springs oh, is, tomorrow. is that tomorrow. It is. Okay. It is. Okay. It starts at 10 a.m. and it'll last until 3 p.m. Seven Springs uh -huh. will have its 13th annual Old Timey Days Festival. Anybody wanting to have a vendor booth should call Seven Springs Town Hall. Uh, they're only open, actually, on Mondays and Wednesdays from 9 to 5. Right. But you can call 252. 569-5241 if you'd like to have a booth at Old Timey Days. There you go. It's Seven Springs tomorrow from 10 to 3. Okay. Well, according to what I have right here, yes, it sir. says, long time ago in the 1980s, back in the 80s, a gas station was burglarized uh -huh. and $800 was stolen from the cash register. Uh-oh. Terrible thing happened. The money was never found and the person responsible was never caught. Now, an anonymous person has claimed responsibility and sent the money back, plus interest. Really? Yes. How much time passed? Well, it was, it's been, it was in the 80s. If it, even if it was the latter part of the 80s, right. it would have been, what, 
uh, 25 years. Exactly. A self-confessed thief sent a letter to Michigan Sheriff's Department admitting that he broke into the convenience store. The letter contained 12 $100 bills and an extra $400 for interest. The letter explained, the author said, that he had lived with the guilt too long. Wow. There was no mention of a motive. Despite lacking police records from three decades ago, officials were able to track down the person who owned the business during the break-in. And the man confirmed that the business was burglarized during that time. The business owner and Bob Baker, the sheriff interviewed, uh, they were both shocked to encounter the written amends, and they said this just doesn't happen every day. Police have not pursued criminal charges, and they have no interest in reopening the case. Well, it's been 25 right, years. Right. The statute of limitations has long since passed. Uh, the gentleman addressed the anonymous person by saying that if this has bothered you for 30 years, I think you've suffered enough. That's a good point. Pretty interesting that he said interest with it. Yeah. 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 They didn't just send the money back. He sent the money and interest. Yeah. That's pretty and amazing. it's interesting that the story started out saying that he robbed the store of $800 and he sent $1,200. Oh, a and the extra $400 was right. for interest. Right. There you go. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Exactly. Interesting. Well, Monday, May the 27th at Cliffs of the Noose at 10 a.m., they are having a ceremony to honor local military, law enforcement, EMS, and fire personnel. The Cliffs of the New State Park will offer discounts on swimming at their park. It's an 11-acre lake. Yeah. Wow. It's nice. For them, it sure is. For yeah. them and their immediate family, swimming will be just a dollar all day from 10 to 6. Whoa. On several dates, May 27th, June 15th, July 4th, and August the 31st. Wow. Well, that is nice. That is nice. So they're offering this to military, law enforcement, EMS, fire personnel, all at the Cliffs of the Noose. If you want to call them, their number is 778-6234. Well, that is very nice That is very nice. Way to go. Yes, it is. Birthday is today. Bob Saget, oh, TV yes. personality, having a birthday. He was on, well, he was on Full House he and was. America's Funniest Home Videos. Uh-huh. That's exactly He's right. He's 56 today. He's the voice in How I Met Your Mother. Oh, is he really? He so is the voice in How I Met Your Mother, that okay. show, that voice that you're always hearing talking. Is that right? So that is his voice, okay. Bob Saget. Well, how I, about that? I probably need to start watching that. It's a good show. I is like it? it. Is it really? Okay. I like it. It's funny. Who's in that? Um, the guy from, remember that show, Doogie Howser? Oh, he really? He's a young doctor. Yeah, okay. He's one of the stars. I can't think of okay. his name right this minute. Okay. Neil Patrick. Neil, Neil Patrick. Patrick. Harris, maybe? Harris, yeah. Mm -hmm. He's it. one of the stars, and All I don't right. remember the other one's name. All right, uh, birthday today also for Nikki Reed. She's 24. She was on Twilight as Rosalie Hale. All right. All right, also birthday today for Sugar Ray Leonard. How old is Sugar Ray Leonard? Sugar Ray is 56 today. So that means he and Bob Saget born on the same day. Uh-huh, happy Separated birthday Separated at birth. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm a, I'm a big fan of Sugar Ray. I talked to him several years ago, but he's, from, he's from Wilmington. And, uh, uh, of course, he uh, made a big name for himself in the Olympics. Yes, he did. And, uh, and went on to become a, 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 big, a big personality and, uh, and a fantastic boxer. That's how I know him. Just an amazing boxer. Yep. All right. Exactly. Uh, also a birthday today, a birth anniversary for Bill Paxton, the actor's 57 today. Uh, Dennis Hopper, who is no longer with us, was born this day a long time ago. Great actor. Yes. Uh, he was, he's done so many things. He was, well, I won't even begin to list the movies he was in, but he was in he so was, many of them. He was in a lot. And quite a director as well, very talented director. Hmm. All right, also a birthday today for Maureen O'Sullivan, one of my favorites, was born this day, 1911. She's since passed, but wow, what a, Maureen O'Sullivan was Jane in the Tarzan movies with Johnny Weissmuller some years ago, long time ago. All right, and Enya having a birthday. She's 51 today. Happy birthday to each and every one All of you. All right. Very good. All right. Well, let's head on out to our interviews. Remember, we have Julie Mint. She's here talking about DGDC and right. the Streetscape Project. Right. Crime Stoppers, Paramount Theater. Stay tuned. <laughs> good morning and welcome back to Wayne Goldsboro Television. Joining me this morning is Julie Metz. She's the director of Downtown Development here in Goldsboro. Welcome to the show, Julie. Thanks, Kim. It's great to be here. 
So we have completed our phase one of streetscape downtown Goldsboro. Yeah. We are loving it. It looks wonderful. The streets are open and wide and it makes you want to walk down the street and enjoy it. But tell me more about the impact that you have seen or we've heard from the community and through businesses since phase one has been completed. Well, I can tell you our office has been um, extremely busy with um, people coming in, asking about the project, um, loving what they see. Um, we've had a lot of people interested in either um, new investment, um, purchasing a building, and a lot of interest from um, businesses interested in opening up downtown. We have a coffee shop that's opening up downtown shortly, right across City Hall on Mulberry Street. Of course, we have Matchbox coming soon on John Street. Um, and then we have you know, property owners that have had properties for sale for some time keep telling me that they're getting you know, exponentially a, a huge increase in, in phone calls and interest. So everybody seems to be extremely happy with the, the impact that it's made on that first block. Of course, we're all waiting now, unfortunately, to see what happens moving forward. But we are moving forward. We do have, um, the city has contracted with an uh, engineer and landscape mm -hmm. architect to begin the construction drawing for the next phase, which consists of two blocks. So we'll see what happens. And that'll be, we'll be hearing a decision on that relatively soon, or back from the engineers. Mm -hmm. to know. So, yeah, we have a couple more steps to um, go through through this next phase. Um, the next phase is the, the 100 block of North Center Street and mm -hmm. the 100 block of South Center Street. So it's a bigger project. Um, but the construction drawing should be completed probably by the end of the summer um, with approvals. And then we'll put it out and we'll ask the council at that time um, if they are approve of the design and the concept and ask them to allow us to put it out for bid. Mm -hmm. um, and then once we receive the bids, of course, we'll review the bids and then we'll go back before council again for the final last time to request um, the award of construction. Um, we're hoping that that will take place probably in the time frame of mid to late November. Because um, our, our schedule, what we'd like to do um, for timing purposes is to begin construction the 1st of January 2014. That's what I was going to ask. Okay, so 2014, January, start construction mm -hmm. on the project. And tell me about how we will communicate with the business owners downtown in those two blocks. Okay. Well, one of the things that I thought we, we did a really good job with in the first phase um, was be very proactive in our communication. And we did it through different, several different venues. Um, fortunately for us, that first block really only consisted of four property owners and four businesses. So it was, it was relatively easy. But we were able to, of course, with your help, um, every two weeks we um, did an interview with the um, contractor in charge uh, of the project so he could talk about things that were either upcoming that we needed to be aware of with, right, regarding water or anything that might affect the businesses and then just to give a general update of where we were in the timeline were we on schedule were we behind and, and things that they might be um, looking forward to expect and help the businesses plan um, so they can communicate with their clients we also sent emails our staff mm -hmm. called them regularly to make sure everything was going okay if they were having any difficulties um, we also um, of course, did press releases for the general public right. as well. So we had a lot of one-on-one -on -one, um, contact with the property owners, but also tried to communicate to the overall public with your help. Um, and we also, um, you know, created signage. Right. I was um, going to mention that. <coughs> with the planning department's help, we created signage to be able to um, help guide traffic so, and, and create um, means of access for all businesses. Um, to help improve uh, the communication so people would know how to get to their and favorite businesses. And that's so businesses. important whenever you're used to going uh, down the street mm -hmm. a certain way and all of a sudden there's a change. Right. And those signs, were so, we have so many calls on how helpful they were oh, in guiding traffic, whether you're new to the area or whether you've gone down that same street m a million times. Right to have sign that, that directs you a certain way is very helpful and we heard that many times. Well, good. I will mention to you just actually yesterday I had a gentleman who was new to town. He was only here for a week and he was doing business with one of our local businesses and I met with him for something with the city and he made the comment to me. He said, I really like what happened right out in front of City Hall. This looks great. I don't know if this is new or if this is something that you all have done a while back, but what happened to the other blocks? Mm -hmm. So I stopped and as we do on a regular basis, I had to explain that you know this was phase one right. and, and this is a long-term project. But he said, I just love this area. It's so inviting. Right. And we hear that time and time again. Yeah, it's nice to be able to see. <coughs> oftentimes when I come to City Hall for business, mm -hmm. you see people sitting on the benches, exactly. just enjoying walking a dog, and that's what it's all about. And so. We have learned um, some lessons um, from that first phase, so we hope to um, get better and improve on some circumstances moving forward. But one of the things that we'll be looking at um, as far as amenities for the next phase and probably 
retrofitting into this block, um, if finances allow it, is to have broadband. So we'll try to have Wi-Fi in that installed mm -hmm. in that area, and also a speaker system so we can play music um, down that center medium. So those are two things that That'd we're looking great, to That'd be great, especially during the holidays mm -hmm. or any special event. Right. <coughs> so it's, it, like I said, it's, it's just a. It, you're right. It creates a nice atmosphere that people enjoy spending time in. That's what it's all about. It is. And now moving to the other piece of it, not only does it look nice and it's very inviting, will you tell us a little bit about the infrastructure that was replaced on, on phase one and how that will also take place on phase two and how it affects the local businesses? Right. Well, everybody was concerned about us spending so much money on just right. simply aesthetics, but the, the reality of it was that, you know, uh, all the infrastructure underneath the ground that you don't see was decayed and, and, and not serving the public and our businesses very well. Mm -hmm. uh, the water lines and, and sewer lines and all of that. So all of it was completely replaced, it was all modernized. So um, almost, I would say nearly 50% of the project cost was spent underground um, right. and will serve the community for generations to come. So Exactly. And, and I think that's a misconception that I wanted to make sure that we cleared up is there was so much infrastructure that was replaced and going forward will be the same way. Right. And you know, what we try to convey to property owners that have been concerned um, about that, um, the project and how it, 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 it makes access to their businesses difficult, right. is that it's better to be a proactive and have a planned strategy and to, to move forward with the a modernization of the infrastructure as well as improving the aesthetics. But um, you know, if there was a problem where there's a water line breakage or something, we would have had to have gone in there. And, you know, so that's at the point where we were. They were it was in such poor condition. Exactly, so, yeah. exactly. Will you tell them a quick story of how one of the four businesses was dramatically affected in phase one with their water and how we got a phone call about that? Well, you know, um, yeah, he was affected by it and he, uh, he uh, it worked out great, right? It and, certainly did. And so, um, and we've had, you know, of the four businesses that were affected, of course, City Hall was one, so exclude them from the, the scenario. But we had two that were adamantly against the project to begin with, um, and one of them throughout the process. Um, I think because of the one-on-one -on -one contact, the personal attention that we gave them, making sure that they were okay, the phone calls. Um, but at the end of the day, um, he's a big supporter of the project. So Absolutely. that was nice to, nice to experience that, that transition. Exactly, through the whole process. And, and, and the one-on-one -on -one attention will happen mm -hmm. in phase two as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Absolutely. We've, in fact, we've already had a meeting with the property owners, um, just letting them know that we were where we were and moving forward with the process. Ask them what their, their best means of contact is. Uh, obviously, for us, it's easier with a staff of three. Um, if we can shoot emails, they're more timely. Exactly. Um, unfortunately, some of our businesses and property owners don't use email, so it makes it a little bit more challenging. But we were able to have that conversation with them so they know, you know what our limitations and burdens right. are and what their responsibilities need to be if they want to be have that timeliness. Um, so it'll be a bit of a, a challenge just moving forward the next two blocks with all the businesses, but um, we're, we're open to doing whatever we need to do and whatever we can to do to make it a smooth process. And I know you do a lot of group meetings mm -hmm. with the businesses as well, yeah. uh, scheduled meetings so they can come and share their concerns and ask their questions and, and so they can be addressed. Right. And we have um, an engineer on board on this, this portion of the project that has done projects like this similarly throughout the state and um, in the region. And so um, we've asked them, and part of their responsibility will be to help phase this project so every business will always have some form of access um, all the time. Um, so it will be slightly handled differently mm -hmm. than the first block where because each of the four property owners were on corners. So exactly. we, we could always get access to them. So in order for to save a little bit of money and also to get it done faster, we were able to shut down the entire street and um, get them access from other streets and other ways. We won't be able to do that with this next phase. So we'll be handling, our approach will be very different. Mm -hmm. We'll be um, phasing it. So phasing it in such a way that, like I said, that everybody always has access. And our engineer will be helping us with that um, in the scheduling and the planning. So Well, that sounds like a mighty good plan. I know. Well, keeping communications open is the most important aspect when it comes to the businesses mm -hmm. so they understand what's going on they're informed they feel like they have an opinion and they have they can put forth their their concerns and get an answer back right, right. and they can be addressed well thank you julie for coming in and, and giving us an update on streetscape sure. moving forward and i know you'll continue to come back as we get more information and more feedback and a little further along with the project you'll come back and give us some updates be happy to well thank you so much thank and this can. was julie metz from downtown goldsboro and this is wayne goldsboro television Thank mm -hmm. you.
Welcome back to the show. Today I have with me Paige Lerner from Crime Stoppers, and she's here to tell us about recent crime and how the community is needed to help solve this case. Welcome back, Paige. Thank you again. So what's happening locally that you need the community's help with? Well, we have had two rather large break-ins at two jewelry store businesses. And um, anybody that's walking around with large amounts of jewelry, and I'll describe them, is obviously a sign that something might be wrong. So and we're hoping... be a part of this, huh? Right. These uh, break-ins were two days apart. And actually, the first one I want to talk about is Barnes Jewelers. And that was on May 4th of this year. Okay. The window was smashed out and several items were taken from the uh, front of the store, which is, in particular is 11 sterling silver tungen rings and three engagement ring samples. So um, obviously if somebody sees something unusual or that amount of jewelry, it might be a sign for them to get, a, get on the phone and give us a call. And the second one was two days later. That happened on May 6th. That was Allen Sutton Jewelry Store here in town also. Kind of the same situation, mm -hmm. the window was broken out and um, several items were snatched from the beginning of the store. And that was 12 Pulsar men's watches and 21 citizen men watches. And so... So if you see somebody with a large amount of watches trying to sell them, you know there's probably something not quite right with that. Right, right. And you know, some of these stores and businesses around, sometimes the uh, bad guys approach them with large amounts of property. You Wanting know, to sell it back. Right. Oh and um, we're obviously asking for the public's help, give us a call. And, in, you know, even if it's a hunch that they've got and, and the hunch is not right, you know, we'll obviously talk to the citizen, see what's going on and release them. So, right. you know, we'd better rather check it out than not check it out. Exactly. We want to solve the crime. And uh, I mean, these business owners are small business owners here right. in Goldsboro trying to make a living. Right. They're local businesses. You know, we want to support them. Exactly. We, we don't want that happening to them. And so we're trying to make every effort to locate this. So one was on May 4th. May at 4th Barnes Jewelry. was Barnes Jewelry. May 6th was Allen Sutton, Sutton Jewelry. So if you saw anything odd happening in that, those particular dates at either one of these jewelry store locations, call Crime Stoppers, the number that is behind us. You'll be talking to Paige Lerner or you can call 911, either Absolutely. one. Absolutely. But Absolutely. Paige, tell them how it works when you call Crime Stoppers. Well, you know, every time, I know I repeat this every week, but I think one of the most important things is uh, for people to know when they call that line, it's blocked. So when I pick up that cell phone, I can't see the name or the number. It just says unavailable. Mm -hmm. That way they're totally anonymous. And so we set up that code name and they can give me information as little or as much as they want to give. They might think this is something we've already know about and we don't. Um, every bit of information is appreciated and then we obviously follow up on those leads. Wonderful. And tell them how they can win a cash prize. Well, the information that leads to any felony arrest towards the case, um, that makes them eligible for cash prize or I say prize, but cash award, uh, cash award up to $1,000. And um, we certainly have the money to pay out and that's what the citizens provide and uh, that's what it's there for. So hopefully they got the information out there that'll lead to the felony arrest in these cases. Exactly. Well, thank you for coming and sharing thank this. You. And if you in the community have seen anything that happened at either one of these locations on May 4th at Barnes Jewelry or May 6th at Allen Sutton Jewelry, or if you see someone in the community trying to sell large amounts of, of jewelry and they are not jewelers, right. we need your help. Call the number behind us, talk with Paige, give her some information, and then if this happens to lead to a felony arrest, you will be eligible for a cash award. Thank you for your help. Thank you, Paige, thank you. for coming in and sharing this information. Community, we need you once again. And this is what's happening locally. Welcome back to Wayne Goldsboro Television. Joining me today is director of the Paramount Theater, Ms. Sherry Archibald. Welcome back, Sherry. Good morning, Kim. Well, you all have so many things happening. We, Wayne and I talk about it on the show all the time. I know you do. Y'all are busy people. <laughs> And, and we're just so glad that the people in our community continue to use the Paramount. It's just a fabulous place, to, a venue to have events. And tell us what is coming up very soon. Well, for the next several weeks, um, we are going to be very busy with dance recitals. It's that time, that of, time year. of year. You're exactly and, right. And um, we do work very closely with Goldsboro Ballet, uh, Miss Robbins Dance Academy, um, Desiree Autry's Performing Arts Academy, and the Arts Company. Um, dance station. Good gracious. <laughs> it is just one after another. So we stay very busy with that and it's wonderful working with them um, for the dancers to come in and out. And, and when you're in the community and you see them and tell them where you work for them to say, oh, I'll be there for my place. recital. Yeah. And, <laughs> and so they love that. And so it's a wonderful venue for parents to be able to come and see uh, what, their, what their girls and boys are able to showcase. Exactly. And it's such a neat way for 
young people, mm -hmm. very young people, two and three and four years old, mm -hmm. to be able to be exposed to the Paramount at such a young age and be on the stage mm -hmm. and, and get that comfortable sense of performing. That's true. What and a be sense introduced, of self confidence yeah, it gives. To be introduced to um, just different forms of dancing. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. that is going to keep us very busy for um, through June actually. Um, there are several things kind of sporadically in and out. We are booked um, every day um, for the rest of May and, and then for a lot of June but um, after June things start slowing down for July and August. Um, families are on vacation, so right, right. one, they're not coming to shows as much, and, and groups are not renting as much because mm -hmm. folks are just, as you know, this time of year, That's um, vacation preparing time. for vacation <laughs> time. But it's our time to start preparing for our next season, oh, goodness, yes. our sponsors, to get the theater. When we're booked every day in February, March, April, and May, there's just not the time to, to do the maintenance things that we want to keep up to just do touch up paint and make sure the facility is just top notch. Exactly. So that's a time for us to try to catch up, so repaint you have two the stage. Out of the year. <laughs> yes, to repaint the stage. Um, you know, just lots of things like that that can get behind if we don't take that opportunity course, to catch course. up. And that's so with, we'll be doing with any that. venue, any any building needs Absolutely. to have a little TLC. Absolutely. So um, we do have lots of dance recitals coming up in May. And, and for those parents, that is an exciting time. I remember mm -hmm. that as a parent, and I know you know as well mm -hmm. that when your child is on that stage, you're so excited. To see their number it is or, or, or you know or numerous times they're on exactly. stage depending on how involved your child is but that, that's such special time and in, in a parent's life to be able to see their child performing on that stage it certainly is and I'm glad that they'll be doing that at the Paramount absolutely well so you all have already announced your performing arts series we have so tell me about uh, it I'm very excited about it and each and every year we we really try to add just a diverse lineup um, to make sure that we have you know music and um, that we have uh, comedy and, and something for families and children, maybe something for young adults. So it's just a, it's sometimes a balance of trying to find all that. But it is starting this fall, and we really like to look at October kind of being that family event um, where moms and dads, um, grandmas and grandpas can bring the kids out. So we have a wonderful ventriloquist coming. Oh, wow. Um, have I've, we had that before or not in a we while? We have not. We have not. So. Not part of the series, definitely. We've had a few um, that other folks have brought right. for different things. But, um, and I always have to look at her last name. Her, her name is Lynn <laughs> Trefsger. Wow. Trefsker. <laughs> That's a <laughs> challenge for twister, me. <laughs> but um, she has been on Comedy Central quite often and, um, and performed with Jeff Dunham quite often oh. as well. And so she's very funny. She is a mom of five children. Um, Ooh, and so the, she knows all about she the, knows, the day in the life. Huh? Yes. <laughs> um, and she, many of, one of her characters that she has that is her friend is a little girl. Uh, one is a camel. Oh my um, goodness. She, and often is a drunk camel. <laughs> so if you want to be entertained, she will definitely do it. <laughs> she will be able to do it. And that's coming up in October. And we will certainly be um, promoting that heavily to the schools, too, to make sure that they know about that and bring families are bringing out their kids. Right, right. So we've got that in our lineup. And, of course, the North Carolina Symphony is always part of our lineup. We love having them. It's is wonderful to have them be able to come to Goldsboro it's and perform. It's a huge tradition for us yes. and for our community. Well, that was a nice tradition to start because that is one way, if people don't want to drive to Raleigh or can't drive yes. to Raleigh, don't have access, they can be exposed to the North Carolina Symphony right here in Goldsboro. Mm -hmm. That is wonderful. You don't wonderful. have to drive to Raleigh, and that's the beauty of our series. Um, mm -hmm. We have professional artists that travel all over the world, um, and we bring them right here to our community so that you don't have to go to Raleigh right. or to Durham or anywhere else. So um, you have that opportunity right here. So we will have the North Carolina Symphony, of course, on the night of lights <laughs> up where we turn all of the downtown yes. lights. So that's, that's right. such a wonderful tradition. Um, I'm also very excited about in January we're planning to have John Brown and the Groove Shop Band. Groove Shop Band. So that's going to be that's going to be fun. There, I think there are about nine. I can't remember if it's nine or eleven in artists the group? in that group. So wow. the stage is going to be packed with entertainers. Well, what kind of group is that? Um, it they basically play jazz and funk music. Wow, and so exciting! He does just a, a variety of things, and so I was so excited when we could get him to come for that. So. That'll be fun. That'll, it sounds that like a in fun January. night. Yes, and of course, we're also doing a Beatles tribute yesterday and today. Oh, and there's a lot of Beatles fans yes. out there. They'll be excited to hear about that. Well, it's a little um, different also because it's kind of a... Um, 
the tribute allows you to just kind of be part of it. You can you can determine what songs you want them to play. It's, it's oh, just wow. interactive with the audience. Well, that's so, always fun. That'll be fun. I love when the audience is involved with the performance. And then our last performance in the series is the Hunts, and maybe some of our viewers will recognize them as the Hunt Family Fiddlers. Hunt um, Family Fiddlers. It is. Uh, is it? five or seven, I think it's seven children in the family, and they typically travel with mom and dad, or they used to, and they used to do, um, they used to do a little bit of clogging with it, and of course all of them performed, mom, dad, and all seven children. Oh, wow. And now that the children are growing up and getting older, they're traveling as a group, just the children, and they're performing together, and so now they've kind of changed their music just a little right, bit. Right, right. And they... As children age, they have a tendency to want yeah, to do that. And to look at, you know, what, what their art is going to be about. Exactly. So they are changing that a little bit, and so I would encourage our, our viewers to mm -hmm. look on our website and watch the video, watch the information, and, and look at YouTube to find out what kind of music they have. Yeah, and, and we'll be sharing that on, on the City and the Paramount's Facebook pages and our YouTube channel mm -hmm. as time gets a little bit closer as well. So that will wrap up our season looking into 2014 and already looking into the fall of 2014 because oh our goodness. dates book so quickly that right. I'm you not going to have, gonna have my own dates if I don't hurry up and, wow. <laughs> and book our series early so I am trying to do that early and lots of our other performing art groups locally <laughs> Center Stage Theater, Wayne Community Concerts, Stage Struck, they're planning ahead, at, I mean, they're planning up to two years ahead because they well, want they have to, to, to book you all. Yeah. So, well, this is a good looking flyer. Thank she you. She has a brochure here, so you'll recognize it. This all is, over the community, it'll be everywhere. That's right, all over the community, but this is for the art series, the mm -hmm. Paramount Art Series. Correct. That'll be happening 2014, the whole year. When you open the inside, you see the inside of the Paramount Theater, and it gives you details on each and every artist how much it costs to exactly. buy tickets, where you can buy tickets, and the list goes on and on. Mm -hmm. Well, we are just so glad, and I think sometimes we forget how special it is to have the Paramount Theater or have a theater mm -hmm. as nice as the Paramount in our own community. When we visit other communities sometimes and we talk about our own Paramount Theater, people are in, are in such awe mm -hmm. of they the are. fact that we do have such a beautiful, nice, renovated theater, and so many communities do not. We are blessed. We are Absolutely. very blessed to have mm -hmm. it. We appreciate that you all continue to bring exciting and new and varied artists to our to our uh, very own theater. That way we can be exposed to so many different things. Thank you. And we appreciate what you all do. Thank you, Sherry, for being Thank with you. us. And this is Wayne Goldsboro Television, and this is what's happening at the Paramount Theater. Well, today we're talking with Dr. Peter Rothling. And I appreciate you being here. How are you? Oh, glad to be here. Good to see you. Now, you're with the Stony Creek uh, Park Alliance. Is that the yes. right? Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, Peter, what is the Stony Creek Park Alliance? What is uh, that? Well, we've been around uh, since our s official establishment in 2006 through the city council. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of a community-driven you know, organization collaborating with the city to establish Stony Creek Park. Okay. And uh, Stony Creek Park, uh, if you don't know, is on East Ash Street near the bottom of the hill between Spence and Claiborne? Yeah, right across from the cloth barn. Okay, yeah. good. And yeah, the big cloth barn uh, shopping center across from the credit union mm -hmm. down a little bit. Yeah. It's uh, one of the newer parks here in, in Goldsboro and uh, it's, it's really nice and growing all the time. Yeah. Well, the initial park was only five acres mm -hmm. and that was essentially defunct you know, when we were seeking through the watch group, you know, new trails for the city. Yeah. You know, when we talked among the Healthy Behaviors Committee you know, we really saw, saw there was a real need, and uh, you know, knowing that property, it was a great opportunity to really provide the city walking trails. I know when Hurricane Fran rolled through, and there have been subsequent hurricanes, that whole area was just a mess. And somebody, I guess your organization or somebody, went in to clean it up, clean it out, make it make it um, inhabitable almost, uh, to where it would be a it would be a really nice park. And you have a lot of amenities in there. Uh, a lot of things going on in there. So, uh, so uh, the people who, who first started uh, pushing this park, are they still involved with this? I know you were there in the, early, in the very beginning. Yeah, our board has stayed together pretty well throughout uh, the process. Uh, the you know, Parks and Recreation has gone through some turnover over time, yeah. and that was fortunate that we had a board to carry the mission through. Right. Uh, so we've worked with a number of Parks and Rec directors, interims, uh, new city manager, but uh, yeah, we're reaching our uh, goal of having a really vibrant park there. I wanted to ask you about your goal. Was the goal uh, in, the, in the early days of when the Alliance first was, was formed, was the goal to achieve what it is now, or did you have other ideas? 
I, it was really a sort of ongoing dynamic process. Work in uh, progress. Huh? Yeah, the, the initial concept was to really get a green space that uh, really wasn't uh, available to the community. Well, I know that I, one of my ideas that I liked, I heard from somebody, I heard that uh, there was a possibility would, there would be a water feature there. I wanted mm -hmm. to see a water feature. Yeah. Now, I know that's more than what we could do at the time, and probably still is, because things have changed considerably over yeah. the last several years. Yeah, we just saw that the you know, technical, the financial demand of that was overshadowing the yeah. whole mission. And uh, really, when we went through a community survey, we found there were other things that the city wanted. And uh, right. you know, that's sort of led us to where we are now. Right. Well, it's a great park. What, uh, what do you see the future of uh, Stony Creek Park to be? Uh, you know, I think we've really reached the point, uh, our big goal was through the Parks and Recreation mm -hmm. Trust Fund grant to have the money to put the amenities in, the restrooms, the picnic shelters, upgrade, uh, yeah. you know, the uh, available features. Uh, you know, the Parks and Recreation has that under their direction and, uh, you know, the new Parks and Rec director, Scott Barnard, has right. really sort of taken charge of that. You know, he's you can see the shelter being built now. The, the I know, it looks great. It's oh, a big it's shelter. Very, very nice. Yeah. Uh, will there be yeah. more than one? I mean, that's a big one. It'll probably do the trick, but... Uh, yeah, I think uh, the, the Parks and Rec will see how that serves the... Yeah. Uh, but uh, that should do it now. They you know, took you know, a couple of the other mm -hmm. shelters considered and put one out at Berkeley. So, and yeah. that's really nice over there. Oh, yeah. That is a nice one out there. Now, did you did you take part in the hillbilly hike here a few days ago? Oh, I wish I had been in town, <laughs> but uh, I took my children down there. We you know, explored the obstacles, and it, oh, yeah. uh, I can only imagine what that was like. Oh, yeah, it was yeah. great. It, I, I, I can imagine it was great, but uh, but uh, I, I was able to experience part of it myself the day before. Kind of a guinea pig sort of mm -hmm. a thing. Uh, do you disc golf or anything like that? Uh, that uh, my son has some disc golfs that we got him for his birthday a month really? ago, but I've enjoyed just watching the disc yeah. golfers out there. Yeah. They're a great feature, and uh, you know, it's just the dynamics you see between you know, the golfers, you know, families getting out there and trying yeah. it. it. It's a great social scene. It is that. There's a lot to do there uh, with the disc golf and the, uh, and the, and the trails, the, uh, the path, the walking path. Mm -hmm. And the, the, uh, is that con still considered Mountain to the Sea trail going through there? It, it's part of the designated Mountain to the Sea. Uh, we're fortunate the Greenways Committee here is yeah. really taking up that uh, part of it. And you know, we're going to yeah. see a lot happen in that direction. That was nice to see this starting to you know, lead into that. Oh, that's great. Tell me about the, the Greenways and uh, what you hope that they'll be able to accomplish for the park. Will they bring in more people, do you feel? Well, that, that was one of the reasons why we were so passionate about this park. We saw it as a trailhead. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, really we get this established and just the location of it, the accessibility, the visibility, would really lead to a lot of other things. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the bike trails that have gone in beside, behind Bicycle World, the, the Greenway North, right. you know, that's really been a nice uh, you know, kind of addition. And now, you know, this Greenway project's gonna take a whole nother level are you uh, are you part of the uh, Greenway organization as well? I, I've been involved, uh, not as active as I'd like to be. Uh, yeah. you know, as we wrap this up, uh, you know, I'd like to get more involved with that. So will the Stony Creek Park Alliance uh, continue to maintain their position uh, as uh, support mm -hmm. for the for the park? Or? Uh, we're actually uh, in sort of the the wrap up phase. Are uh, you really? Yeah, we okay. you know, accomplished the Parks and Recreation mm -hmm. Trust Fund grant and. Uh, you know, Scott Barnard has really taken charge of things, mm -hmm. and fortunately he has the Recreation Advisory Committee mm -hmm. that, you know, it's a community group that, uh, that was our whole goal, is to make this a community-led effort, right. not, not just telling the city do this for us. We wanted to do this for the city. Well, I salute you because the, uh, uh, I would certainly say that you have achieved and uh, surpassed your goal in making uh, Stony Creek Park uh, certainly a, a wonderful place for a family to visit, picnic, uh, walking, uh, uh, golf, uh, the uh, disc golf, just a lot of, it's a fun place to go, it really is. So, so I appreciate you coming in and talking to us about that. Oh, no, we're what's just eager to see uh, just what's in the future. Yeah, I was going to ask you, what's, what's in the future? Uh, well, you know, the dog park is established, right. so it's been nice to see, you know, the number of people out there with dogs and that, you know, usership, uh, the mm -hmm. membership has increased. Uh, mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I think uh, now that the, you know, we've got the infrastructure coming into the park, uh, like you said, with the hillbilly hike, you know, you, once you have 
infrastructure, yeah. then there's more and more uses. And, yeah, it just uh, grows exponentially. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and really, there's a whole economy to park development that uh, you know, a lot of people don't appreciate. It's, it's really an investment that pays off many times over. Right. So, right. yeah, we hope to see you know, more events bringing money into the city. The disc golfers are doing a good job yeah. with the tournaments. Uh, yeah. They, they have a big vision for what they're doing with that. Wow. That's great. So travel and tourism, uh, now when you have a very useful parks, uh, it opens up opportunities for them. It does. And I think, uh, do you know if the plan is to, uh, is to advertise the park as, as being a place to visit, to go by the, uh, park, uh, by the uh, travel and tourism? I, I, you know, talking with Rick Sumner, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, he's been a great supporter from, from uh, you know, throughout the project and uh, you know, they're very aware of the opportunities and uh, oh, yeah. you know the hillbilly hike is just one example of how right. you can try to bring people in. I've, I've known a lot of people that used to go out of town to dog parks to yes. play disc golf. We have those people staying at home now. And That's great. Yeah. All right. Very good. Dr. Peter Rothling of the Stony Creek Park Alliance. They feel that they have accomplished what they set out to do. And thank you yeah. very much Peter for being with us today. Oh, thank you to be here. And we're back. Thank you for staying with us. And do want to make a correction. The last interview, of course, was not the Chamber of Commerce. It was uh, Stony Creek Park Alliance yeah. with Dr. Pete Rothling. That's right. That's and, right. And what a job they have done. That's they great. have. I mean, they were determined, and they stayed together and yeah. held strong. And now look at Stony Creek Park. Yeah. Wow. All right. Done a great job. Our producer was kind enough, since we brought it up to start with, to give me a list of <laughs> some of the endangered species Yes. From around Wayne County. <laughs> and the world. <laughs> and, and the rest of the world, too. <laughs> but but uh, <clears throat> I understand the ivory-billed woodpecker is endangered. The ivory-billed? Ivory-billed, yes. That is good to know. So the next time you see one. The Amur leopard is also endangered. So is the Javon rhinoceros. The northern sportive lemur. There you go. Which is a kind of a monkey, I presume. Uh, the northern right whale. Hmm. Can't be all bad. Uh, Not West northern white, but northern right. Yes, northern R -I -G -H -T. right, of course. Yes, R I G H T. Yes. Mm -hmm. The western lowland gorilla has been on the endangered species yes, for has. a number of years. The uh, leather neck turtle. I'm sorry, the leather back turtle. I was thinking of the Marines. <laughs> the leather back sea turtle is uh, on the endangered species list. So is the uh, Siberian tiger. Really? Well, it's cold up there, you know. Was that it always been? Yeah, I guess so. Have you ever been to <laughs> Siberia? No, but I'm just assuming it's pretty cold. Yeah, I mean, what, you know, what's a, a tiger doing in Siberia? What, did he get lost? No, but they have, like, all that big white fur. Oh, yeah, they have big they're white gorgeous. fur. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Maybe that's why they're endangered. Maybe so. Yeah. I believe that's one of the ones that the two magicians or circus men used. That's that right. That one was attacked. Yeah. Siegfried and Roy. Maybe, yeah. Siegfried That's exactly and Roy right. G. Div. Uh -huh. That's right. I believe so. <laughs> right. The giant uh, Chinese giant salamander. The little dodo bird. I thought the little, I thought the dodo was already extinct. Maybe not. I'm not sure anyway, about the dodos. This says the little dodo bird. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure about the dodos I know. at all. <laughs> okay. I'm not even confident. And I also have been told and informed <laughs> that the elephants can live as long as 60 to 70 years. How about that? And at one time there was a, uh, a legend that there was an elephant graveyard. You know, speaking of Maureen O'Sullivan uh -huh. a little while ago, uh, there was a couple of Tarzan movies that uh, uh, referred to the elephant graveyard where elephants would go to a secret place to pass on. Yes. That wasn't, that's not true. Not true at all. No, it's not true at all. That's all just a big myth. A big myth. Right. Okay, what do you have? Well, the last thing I want to tell you about is there's a first Friday once again at the Arts Council of Wayne County. Oh, boy. Friday, June the 7th, 5 o'clock to 8 o'clock p.m. Looking for something fun and relaxing to start off your weekend? We'll stop by for some refreshments, see their latest exhibits, meet local artists, and watch them at work. Watch them at work, the yeah. artists? Yeah, yes, they actually. If they're a painter, they paint something right then and then it's auctioned off. Uh, let's see, try your hand at some art projects yourself. Come enjoy some live music performed by local musicians. 
you can give them a call at 736-3300. That's Friday, June the 7th, 5 to 8 p.m. Oh, Arts boy. Council of Wayne County, 102 North John oh, Street. Oh, boy, that sounds like fun. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's see, what else do we have here? There's that lecture if you wanted to talk about that. Oh, what, this right here? No, but this right here. Oh, this right here. I'd love to talk about that. It's about oh. history, so I thought you might like it about Pardon Civil me. War. Yeah, that's the sesquicentennial anniversary of the Civil War battle. Uh, a lecture will be given at uh, Moffat Auditorium, and it's about the Battle of Gettysburg. Exactly. All right, mm -hmm. Battle of Gettysburg, and the lecture will be given June 11th, beginning at 7 p.m., going for an hour and a half at Wayne Community College. Wayne Community College, Moffat Auditorium, June 11th, the 150th anniversary of the Battle of Gettysburg. That's right. Big one. Okay. All right. If you've not sent in your motto to the city, do it now because oh. of the phrase that pays. What Send in the winning motto. You know we're having our contest. What's in a name? You oh, can yeah. you can submit anybody. It's open to any and everyone to submit your motto. You can do it through June the 30th. That is the deadline. Oh, boy. So please go to the website, goldsboronc.gov. If you see what's in a name, click on it. If you see what? What's in a name. Oh, okay. <laughs> Click on it and you can submit your mottos or you can get submission forms right there in City Hall. What up to the da, 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 da. Well, we'll do that. Okay. We're looking for the city of Goldsboro, da 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 da. And the da 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 <laughs> needs, <you> to be, <laughs> needs to be replaced by your winning motto. That's good. <laughs> da 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 da. Da, 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 da. There you go. <laughs> All right, let's see. I think that's about uh, a wrap for today. Is that a wrap? I believe it might be. Does that mean we also break dance? I'm not. I don't know about you. You can give us a little break dance if you'd like to. No. Okay. And I, be I guess we will see you again Monday morning. We'll How be about back. that oh, with a full that's show? Right. That's right. Have we'll a great weekend. You too. And until then, I'm Wayne Allen. And I'm Kim Best. And this is what's happening in your community.